Hi, right, Mansfield. I'd like to talk about politics. And as the initial phase of post Brexit free ports gets underway, there have been quite a lot of people asking me to talk about these again. And I've done so in the past. I feel there's also going to be uh, important for me here to present a few different views on this one. Reason being that whatever you want to call this project is powerfully against the interests of ordinary people or the country. You know, we should be wary of what some might want them to become. But there are also some concerns that people are expressing it as if they're already here, as opposed to just the things to be wary of. All quite complicated, but let me try and break it down. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to refer to like three types of what the government would like to call something like an economic enterprise zone. First, free ports. That's what they are, free ports. These are free ports as they used to exist in the UK when we were in the EU. But hang on, I thought the Tories said we needed to leave the EU to have free ports. No, we had free ports. David Cameron abolished them because they were crap. There are still some free ports in other parts of the EU, however. Second, we might call them Brexit free ports, because although there are free ports in the EU, there were free ports in the UK when we were members of the EU. All perfectly legal, albeit as David Cameron himself thought, crap. There are still rules for their use. Now, in theory, there is a model of free port that the Tories might like to adopt, which wouldn't have been permitted in the EU. We could call those Brexit free ports. That being said, the free ports that are launching in the UK right now seem to be the first type of free port, the ones that the EU have no problem with. Third, charter cities. These are very different types of beast and have long been feared by those who both oppose Brexit and are highly suspicious of Tory motivations, myself included. But, and this is a big but, there are some convinced that this free port idea is a Trojan horse to introduce charter cities. And the basis for this argument, however, is open to some criticism. So first of all, just to be clear, what do we mean about a charter city that's different to like a free port? Well, essentially, the government hands over a chunk of their country to be run by some bugger else. It might be another government. It might be a private corporation. It's just you, you're sort of excluding it from the normal laws and regulations of that country. There are limits to what they can do. They don't just become dictator for life, but they can set laws and regulations as well as drop some they don't like. And one fear of this sort of beast in the UK would be, say, dropping the concept of a minimum wage, for example, or dropping health and safety regulations. There are all sorts of things that I think we need to be very, very wary of. But it's also important to note that what we have opening up in the UK are not charter cities, they're free ports. And more to the point, they're the sorts of free ports that as far as I can tell, would be permitted in the EU as well. So why have the government implemented them and why are people convinced they will become charter cities? Well, in the first case, I just think because Tories are like a dog chasing a car. The car stopped quite suddenly, probably at the lights, and now the dog has caught the car. He doesn't know what to do with it. They promised free ports as a Brexit benefit. So they've introduced some free ports so they can claim they've delivered the benefits. I don't think there's any further thinking to it than that. We won't get any benefits. The EU have no problems with them. So they're certainly not Brexit benefits. But this is just about headlines in the Daily Express. It's like the trade deals we have. They don't do anything. They're rubbish. As for why people are convinced they'll become charter cities, there are good reasons. But it's based mostly on the fact that there are quite a few shady and influential people on the far right wing of politics via their think tanks that are actively trying to get charter cities implemented into the UK. In other words, there are Brexit supporting far right think tanks that are arguing for charter cities in the UK. Right? But just because some far right nutters want a thing and just because some other far right nutters are in charge of the government at the moment, doesn't mean the first group of far right nutters will get what they want. So I'm going to link something in the description below. It's an article by Chris Gray, someone who produces brilliant blog posts, and I would highly recommend well, reading them for anyone interested in the technical aspects of Brexit. 
His article in Byline Times, I think, is a must read if you want to find out more about this topic. I've referred to Baker Street Herald in the past as well as being one of the best sources of warnings about the problems with charter cities. It's very comprehensive. The reason for reading the article by Professor Gray is that it's important to note that we do not have charter cities coming our way. We do not know that they will be doing so later on either. That being said, it's particularly reckless to dismiss the possibility. Because there was a time when people dismissed the possibility that people in this country would vote to leave the EU. It seemed insane. The only people who wanted it were a fringe of swivel-eyed loons, the far right of the Tory party and the DUP in Northern Ireland. That was it. No one else wanted it. Including the core of the Conservative Party. No one wanted it. Yet we still got it. As they say, the price for freedom is eternal vigilance. And we weren't particularly vigilant. But here's where I think there's a tricky tightrope to walk. On the one hand, it's vital to look out for any credible warning signs that the government might ever move towards legislation for charter cities and oppose it when it happens. On the other, the problem with trying to suggest that what the government are doing right now is building charter cities is that you lose credibility and make it difficult to counter what is still a pretty bad project in the free ports we have. We cannot imagine that free ports are just this benign thing that aren't too bad. Free ports, which is what we're getting, don't boost productivity. They don't boost wages. They do nothing for the country. The absolute best you can say about them, the reason why countries try them from time to time, is that they may pull investment from one part of the country which has lots, to another part of the country which doesn't have enough. That's the best case scenario. But it doesn't increase the overall level of investment. At best, it spreads it about. And you may think, well, this is fair enough still, you know, even if it's just it, reducing inequality between different parts of the country. The problem is that it only works at all if businesses see greater profits for themselves. So it comes at a cost of overall investment. It's simple enough. For a business to want to move from an affluent part of the country to a free port, they're going to incur some costs in relocating. And also, it's a bit of a leap into the dark. You know, there's some uncertainties there. Why would they move a profitable business somewhere where they may have difficulties? For it to be worth their while, they need to be certain they're going to recoup the costs and will definitely make more profit in that free port. Well, more profit means less money going into the country, doesn't it? So to throw some numbers out, what, you, what might happen is you might lose £50 billion worth of investment in a wealthy part of the country and turn it into £30 billion of investment in a poorer part. Now, you, that's good for the poorer part because they, from their point of view, they gain £30 billion worth of investment. Brilliant. But the country as a whole loses £20 billion along with the tax revenues that go with it. So there are absolutely things to question about the performance of free ports. And it's very important that, you know, they're happening now, that's it, that after a year, two years, three years and so on, that people keep coming back and going, so what have we gained out of it? What's the country gained? What have the people in those areas gained? What has the whole country gained? And the problem with conflating them with charter cities, and I, I accept that some of the strongest witnesses are not doing that now, but, the, but some are, because some are misreading it. The problem with it is that the genuine criticism risks being drowned out as all opposition to the scheme are lumped into the conspiracy theory cranks brigade. And then what happens if the government later on does start to lay the groundwork for charter cities? What then? Opposing it becomes almost impossible because those making a fuss have already become famous as cranks and ordinary members of the public will treat them the same as flat earthers. So it's tricky. It's why I'm a believer in being very, very clear about the difference between what the government is doing and what it might do in the future. What it is doing is implementing a system of free ports that was perfectly legal in the EU. It's a scheme that used to exist in the UK as it still does in some parts of the EU. It was shut down by the Conservatives under David Cameron as being a waste of a white elephant. That's what we're getting, something that the Conservatives thought was a waste of resources. What we might get later on is the free ports turn into something that might not be within EU rules. In other words, a Brexit free port, 
what we might also get is something that turns into a charter city. But there are no government plans for either. No legislation proposed to make it a reality because there would need to be. Just a concern that because some people on the far right want them, that they may one day have enough influence over a Conservative government to adopt them. Maybe there's a heightened concern as we change Prime Minister for another Tory who's associating herself with far-right think tanks. But the problem we have right now is not charter cities, it is free ports. They are bad enough. They still allow companies to dodge taxes. That means less money for public services. It allows them to dodge normal planning procedures. That means they may build things that are harmful to the local community. They are a problem in themselves but much harder to challenge if people muddy the waters with accusations that are easy to refute. I'll give you an example to finish off. When I worked at a college years ago, I think it was a lot of years ago, the very, very dodgy principal hired a friend of his son straight out of university, just graduated, into a senior executive role at the college. A fresh graduate becoming a very well-paid senior executive, dodgy as hell. It was so dodgy that Private Eye caught it and ran a story on it. But they got one tiny little detail wrong. The article was bang on the money, but for one thing. They described this person as being the girlfriend of the principal's son. So the principal was able to counter and say, this is not my son's girlfriend at all. And done dodged the accusations without ever having to refer to the key point that he's appointed a raw graduate into a senior management role with a familial link to himself. Really important to get every single detail right. If you get something even slightly wrong, even if it's not really important, not part of the, the story, if it's just a, a side issue, get it slightly wrong. Corrupt people will focus on that thing you got wrong to trash your entire objection. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.